What's going on guys? Today we're going back to NHL 15, which a lot of people consider to be the worst NHL game ever made. That of course is the next gen copy of NHL 15 on the Xbox One, the PS4. The one on the 360 and PS3 was actually pretty good. But not only is a lot of people consider it to be one of the worst NHL games ever made, I think the franchise mode, or at least what was called GM mode then, might have been the worst GM mode as well. So looking at it here guys, you can see like the game was very bare bones. Not a whole lot to the menus because there just wasn't a whole lot to the game. You got the GM mode, you got play now, online play, playoff mode. A be a pro that was, you know, pretty basic. Ultimate team, a lot of people called NHL 15, NHL 15 Hockey Ultimate Team because that was pretty much all you had to play. The GM mode was basic, the be a pro was basic. There wasn't even like EASHL. Today I want to focus on GM mode because GM mode in this game was honestly, I think, probably the worst of any NHL game. And looking at my save files here, guys, you can see I have a couple Washington Capital saves. This was actually the only GM mode I did in NHL 15. It's a Washington Capital series. It only lasted five seasons. And at some point, like, you know, a few years down the road or whatever, I actually, like, deleted the whole series. I was trying to find it on YouTube. It's gone. I don't remember doing it, but clearly I was like, you know what, that sucked. I just got rid of it. So I kind of don't really remember why it was so bad. I know, like, it was missing a lot of features, but... I figured today we'll just, you know, test it out. So I'm just going to go through a season here with you guys and see if NHL 15 GM mode is as bad as I remember. I think this is the year that the Oilers got the first overall pick and won Conor McDavid. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Top players at the time, Hall, Eberle, Nugent Hopkins. I mean, you can see the team salary, players and organization, average age. That must just be like the NHL organization and not like the team as a whole. I mean, it shows the top players of the picture. I actually kind of like that. You got the salary cap there rules and settings, you got authentic cap penalties, computer trades, you got the difficulty, game style, injuries you can turn off, trade difficulty, I'll leave that on medium I guess. So that looks you know more or less the same, obviously you couldn't affect like the sim engine scoring, things like that, especially the draft class quality yet, that was not added in. Advanced settings, um, this looks to be, obviously there's a lot less here, now you actually have to scroll, but you know, the most important stuff does look to be here. And mostly in the video, guys, I noticed I completely glossed over one big feature not being in NHL 15 GM mode. That's one of my favorite features, which is the fantasy draft. I didn't notice it because it really wasn't there. Um, no option to put it on. Like, that's crazy. It seems like such a simple thing to have. And then it had me looking at, like, you know, NHL 24 settings. Obviously, no owner mode yet in the game. No player morale, fog of war. You couldn't relocate a franchise. Like, literally, like I said, this thing was... So, so bare bones. Then I had me looking at this graphic comparing NHL 15 and NHL 14 and kind of related GM mode, but like there's not even a season mode in NHL 15, probably because, you know, be a GM's already so basic, but then you got all those other modes there also taken out. Just kind of crazy looking back on. All right, guys, let's start this career and just see like what's available. I'm pretty sure if I remember right, Scotty was terrible on this. Uh, we'll try some trades and stuff, see what that's like, but. Like I said, I'm just trying to remember like what made this so, so bad. Now look at the other lines for here. I'm not gonna lie, I really preferred when they had the player profile on the right opposed to the top. Um, I think this is just a lot cleaner. Uh, you can see the overall there with like the bar. I mean, so far not bad. You actually got like um, the color there for the potentials. Look at this Oilers team here. Uh, you can see why, you know, they're picking pretty high. Victor Fast, 84. Ben Scrimmage, 84. I think the range were a bit different back then. Like those are not two 84 overall goalies. I can see there, Everly Nuge Hall. Get a line screen, that was fine. Uh, you had roster move, could go to the AHL, call guys up. This looks to all be the same. Like I said, I think it came down to like scouting and stuff where it was just, I don't know, nothing. They have a draft too, I'm curious to see. I went to manage budget, we got off street compensation. Take a look here at contracts. Can we do extensions in this game or could we not do that yet? So like Lander here, he's got one year left. I can't extend him though. Yeah, view profile, that's it. Uh, Davidson, same thing. You got Nail Yakubov here, 20 years old, 81 overall, low top six potential. Imagine getting low top six first overall. This game would have came out in fall 2024, so a couple years after he got drafted. Salary 3.775. I feel like he should still be on his entry level deal. I'm not sure uh, why that's so high, but uh, yeah, as you guys can see, cannot do extensions. So that's one thing that kind of sucks. And there's also no way that I'm seeing to actually look at other teams' contracts, which kind of sucks, because um, sometimes that is, you know, a nice feature. Now I will say the captains and jersey screen looks to be pretty much identical uh, to what it is now. So, I mean, I guess really all we can do here, trade, scout, free agent. Like I said, scouting, I remember, was pretty terrible. So, view all prospects in region. Let's see, like, we'll scout OHL. Can we do that? Yeah, we can. So, OHL, forwards, six weeks. Let's see if they can find McDavid for us or not. And next you guys look at free agency. This is so funny to me. Like, this is how you know the ratings have been bad for what? At least nine years now. How do you have all these like mid to low 80 free agents? If they were that good, 
these guys will be getting signed to teams. But just for fun here, we'll try signing some players. We actually have a couple former Oilers there, and Jared Stoll and Dustin Penner. I mean, even picking in the defense would be nice. So you can see 2.3 million. We have how much cap space? Does it, it doesn't actually tell me how much cap space I have. It shows I'm at 62 million of 69 million. The max was 69 million nine years ago. Geez. So we have 7 million in cap space, but it actually makes you do the math, which I mean, I graduated university. I'll be all right. Look at the nerd. Look at the nerd. Look at him. I feel like, you know, for some kids, that might not be the easiest math just looking at that. We tried signing Penner there. Picking in, we're actually not going to have quite enough money for We'll make an offer on him too, just for fun. So trading block, let's see what this looks like. You got three slots opposed to five. I mean, really though, depth chart, I kind of actually like seeing that. It shows you what you have a lot of. It looks like you still have those surplus and wants. So just like now, uh, you can add items. You can choose like the potential range, even though it's showing stars opposed to like medium top nine, medium top six. I think this was the first game where they switched from stars to that. So it looks like um, in terms of the wants and the surplus, they didn't make the full change over. So around the proposed trade screen here, guys. And again, even here, like it actually doesn't show the cap space you have available. You have to do the math. Never mind. When you click on it, it actually then shows. I don't know why did it, <laughs> why is it just not loading? So uh, you got Hall there with quite a bit of value. Nuge, Dry Saddle, of course, and Junior, 72 medium elite. I uh, obviously ended up being even better than that, but um, this here I don't think looks that bad. I'd really like to see the contract on the same page, not having to, you know, scroll over one to the right. Is it nitpicky? Definitely a little bit, but I mean, it's pretty important, I'd say, uh, what that contract is. See here, the Oilers have two first round picks. This one was used to draft Connor McDavid. This one they traded away, ended up being used to draft Matthew Barzell. So a couple uh, pretty nice first round picks there, I'd say. And I'll look through the teams, guys. You can still see it shows like their top three players on the block. The Panthers here actually have Yammer Yager. I think he could be fun to trade for. 86 overall, he's 42. Throw him there on the Oilers. You can ask for a first round pick back as well. Yager in a first for Rinch and uh, Pouliot. Trades rejected. So fair enough. Good to see them saying no to that. You throw in the second. Trades accepted. Okay, so you got Yager there. We got three first. We got some free agents coming. Uh, definitely seems like, you know, pretty easy. Uh, to do things in this game. Obviously there was no uh, all-star game. I think this was the first year they took it out because um, it was in like NHL 13, NHL 14. So I should start simulating here guys. If I remember right, that's another thing with this game. Like the simulation uh, kind of took a while. And there we go, picking it, offer accepted. Same with Penner, Stoll, brought in Yager. This Oilers team, maybe gonna do some damage. I don't know what this is, but like every time I go to like a screen with players, they don't load up. So I feel like that was probably something that was bugging me. It's also sorted, I don't even know. It's not alphabetical. I have no idea how they're sorting this. <laughs> it's just some weird things. Maybe it's because I'm playing on Series X now. I don't know. All right, guys, look at this new Oilers team. We got the first line there, Hall, Nuge, Everly. Yager's on the second with Jared Stoll. Same with Yakupov playing there. We got Dustin Penner. Uh, Purcell's now down in the third line. All of a sudden, we got a team picking in there. We just signed in the top pair. We got Clefbaum playing on the bottom. Maybe he'll go up in rating. So like I said, I'm just going to start simming through this, see what happens. Andrew Ferentz for a couple thirds. I mean, he's the captain of this team. Panthers, though, we kind of fleeced them, I think, and Yager in a first there. And they want to make another deal with us. And as you can see, like, the simulation's pretty slow. Like, it's not drastically slow, but it's going to take a while. <laughs> Look at this. Just like the new game, we said no to three thirds. Now they're asking for Ferentz and an extra player. Uh, but Jonas has got top six potential. So they're like, you know what? We'll make you a worse offer. Maybe he'll say yes. So I see that that trade logic existed in the game nine years ago. And Still exists in the game now. Now, as I showed you guys earlier, I had my scouts in the OHL for the past six weeks. They found out about Pavel Zach, who's gonna go top 10. Lawson Kroos, who's a first slash second rounder. Dylan Strom there, they think he's gonna have bottom six four potential to the top 10. Now, one kind of interesting thing too, is like if you click on a player, it's got like the attributes there. You can see scouting accuracy, low, medium, high, exact, but they don't actually like simulate the junior season. So like, I can't click anything to see how Dylan Strom's, you know, playing for the Erie Otters, how he played season prior. All I can actually look at there is the stats. So, you know, definitely doesn't make it as realistic. You got Mitch Marner there when he played center with the Knights, but we got a generational talent in this draft. Like, you don't have to be an NHL scout to know that. Everyone in the world knows that. And for some reason, our scouts just figured they're not going to check in on Connor McDavid. Like, I have them only scouting OHL forwards, and when they know McDavid's going to go top 10, which is a shocker, they have no information on him. They don't even know that his speed's, like, going to be really good. Like, I don't know how you kind of hone in on guys, but uh, I just thought that was funny. Like, the most obvious draft pick, and my scouts are giving me nothing on them. And I guess one more thing I should mention to you guys with scouting, unlike the current games, you don't actually have scouts. So, um, it showed that, like, we have different accuracy in each region. 
You can see OHL is A minus. Looks like all the CHL. USA, there's a B. I assume the different scout accuracies are just tied to each team because as far as I can tell, there's no way to like, you know, change that via upgrading your scout, changing your scout, of course, too. Like there's no coaches, anything like that. This GMO was definitely super, super bare bones. I think that's just why like, you know, I got tired of it so quickly. Even on the home screen here, you can see it shows us third place in our division, but like there's no way to actually um, check all the other divisions without going to uh, the team standing screen. And actually going to the stat screen here, you can see it's pretty much exactly the same as what we have right now. So I can definitely see why I got tired of this so quick. There's not a ton of depth in the mode and the fact that like everything takes longer to do would just make it kind of like a, you know, a grueling K mode to play. And like I was saying, guys, this is the first game where they got rid of the all-star game and instead just have like, you know, the message center pop up showing you some of the guys that made it, because I just counted, it only actually says 25 players. Uh, there should be 40 though, 20 guys for each side. So I don't even see an oiler here. It's kind of just pointless. All right, guys, we're at the trade deadline. If I remember right, you can like accidentally sim buy it and nothing will happen. You basically have to make sure you stop beforehand. Otherwise you're screwed. And let's see, we do get an offer from the Panthers. A couple thirds there, Kara Gordon. And yeah, you can just sim right by the deadline. There's no pop-up saying, hey, it's trade deadline today. Maybe you want to make some moves. There's no like mini game, anything like that. Just another day telling you after that day, no more trades. And so I just finished him through the season, guys. As you can see, the Oilers actually made the playoffs. We have the Ducks there in round one. Uh, as you can see, we got second place in the division. Uh, you go to Stat Central. Like I said, it's pretty similar right now. Like you click on this screen here, it'll show you all your leading scores. Everly a point per game. Hall and Nuge there, 71. Yager played big for us. Goaltending here, of course, you know, you can see all of their stats. Um, looks like if you do scroll all the way over uh, through the divisions, you can see the entire league. So they still had that, which is nice. Parise actually, 100 point season there, led the NHL. So like, this is all pretty much the same. Again, it does suck, you know, you have to uh, go to this screen to actually see all the different divisions. But if we were to look at the entire league, you can see like, this is basically the same. Last place there was the Coyotes. And so one thing I'm curious about guys, I'm not sure if there's actually a way to like, look at the Ducks roster in franchise. Cause like I'm looking at our team here, but I'm not seeing any button to like look at a different team. You go to roster moves. We got NHL, AHL again, doesn't pop up right away for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe like if I actually click play now, I can then look at their team. But as far as I'm seeing, I guess we could go to like the trade screen. Never mind, we actually can't do that because it's past the trade deadline. So yeah, I think the only way to then look at a team must be uh, click play next game and their lines will pop up. You gotta love, you know, the old graphics here, Hall and Perry. What's crazy is like, this was next gen at the time. I do like how you can actually compare the ratings though. It's, you know, on there as long as you want it to be because it's showing it while you're picking your jerseys. But like, let's see here. I should really like adjust starting line. Yeah, okay, edit lines and strategy. Unless, are they gonna hide the ducks from me? Let's see, Oilers edit lines. I, yeah, can I not see the ducks roster? <laughs> Cause that's kind of crazy, starting lineups and it shows mine does not show the Ducks. So once you get to the playoffs, you don't know what the other team looks like till you played them. As you can't look at the other teams on the contract screen, the edit line screen, even playing them right here, edit line, starting lineup, not showing me anything. So you would literally have to jump into a game and see like any big moves they made, which obviously you're not gonna probably do that every time if you're simming, so unfortunate. And now the Ducks just beat us in six guys. And one thing I'm just realizing now, I don't think I missed it. No, I didn't. There's no like start button to change over to your AHL team. I was like, wait a minute, how are the, I think it was the Barons at this point, Oklahoma City Barons, uh, doing right now for the Oilers. There's no AHL in this franchise. I don't know how it took me that long to realize. Wow, so like, I'm wondering, okay, I'm really curious now too, like what are the stats like for, that we're in the NHL this year? Jonasu there, 80 overall, I must've just missed him. Okay, he's got, yeah, he just has, no NHL points, didn't play in the AHL this season, so he just did nothing. Or even like a Laurent Brassois here, obviously ended up being, you know, a bit of a fringe goalie. He's got high NHL starting potential here. And yeah, no career stats. So literally no AHL. I don't know how it took me so long to realize that. That's that's a pretty big deal. There's no AHL, no really incentive. You have injuries off to have any more than your 20 guys because you're not even trying to win a Calder Cup. And you know what guys, I feel like there being no HL team in NHL 15 is kind of affecting NHL 24. I mentioned before, HL production does not affect a player's growth. So if you send like a top prospect to the AHL and he puts up 200 points, it will not make him grow any more than if you had him scrapped. All that matters is his potential. And then it's just kind of like RNG, whether or not he grows if he's just played in the AHL. And it's probably based on the fact that the system started out without there being an AHL league. So any players on the NHL had to just grow like naturally but via their potential. I think I just figured something out. That is crazy. Uh, never switched it because you know 200 points in the AHL should help a guy grow more the fact it doesn't 
I think this is why. So, yeah, no HL. Hilarious. Yeah, so this is funny, guys. Right here it says the playoffs have ended. Stanley Cup champions, Tampa Bay Lightning. There's no, like, Color Cup champion. Also, too, I'm not going to, like, you know, sim five years or whatever. But, obviously, um, just like now, there's no, you know, franchise recap, whatever, that says everything you've accomplished. As, like I mentioned, this is, like, the most bare-bones GM mode, I think, um, NHL might have ever put out. And so I think it's now draft day. We'll take a quick look here at the awards. This screen is pretty much the same. I honestly might even like this one a little bit better, if I'm being honest. I'm not sure exactly why. Wait a minute. Okay, all right. It was just kind of glitched there. I think maybe just having the big trophy with the gray background. This just looks a little bit cleaner. You can see Johnny Goudreau there. No face yet. Tyler Johnson, Conn Smith Trophy winner. Pavel Datsuk there getting a Selkie, but big year for Parise. Yeah, again, honestly, I say the ward screen I actually like better. I think that's probably the only thing I do like better in this GM mode, but we'll get to the draft. We'll see if our scouts have finally found McDavid. Let's take a look here. The Devils are picking first overall. Take a look at scouted players. So... How are they ranking these guys? Do we not get ranked? Maybe sort by potential, so that's the worst. McDavid, they got being a high top six. And the accuracy on that's high. That is interesting. They got an 82 speed, but that's low accuracy with 93 Excel. Uh, so they finally did, you know, scout him. He's got franchise potential there, okay. So projection, franchise. I guess you'd probably sort it by this then. You got McDavid at the top, Strom. I think this is a made up guy. He's gonna go top five. You got Konechny, Vince Dunn, Kraus. Um, interesting, Pavel Zaka, Mitch Marner's a first rounder, but there's no ranking system, like there's no central scouting ranking guys. You got league interest as well. I think the central scouting I actually was kind of taking for granted because I definitely like that better in terms of sorting stuff. Although in all honesty, this might be a bit more realistic because like having like an exact number for each guy makes it kind of too easy to trade up or down and still get them. Whereas this, you're not exactly sure where players are going to go. Kenzie Blackwood here apparently is the worst goalie, low AHL backup. And you see just like now they do have a timer on each pick. I'm curious, what does the Devils first overall pick value? Even with McDavid there, the value, like, how does that compare? What's our pick? It doesn't even have a number. The Penguins pick apparently is high. Let's just see. Medium difficulty. Trades rejected. We made the playoffs, so Penguins pick and our pick. <laughs> they said yes. Wow, I think it's even easier to trade for first overall uh, in this game than before. Where was the Penguins? The Penguins are picking five, so... Fifth overall in like a 20-something they gave us first overall. All right, guys, I just found another thing super strange about this game. So when you're looking at scouted players, you can sort it by all players, and you can see like their projections there. Now you notice it's all players. Like you got every position. There's only one franchise there in McDavid. But then like when I actually go to make the pick, different players show up. Um, I'm going to sort it by projected here. As you can see, you got Barzell now and McDavid, both franchise. I think this row guy wasn't there before. I don't understand. Also, you can't look at all players. You got centers, left wings, right wings. You have to do it by position. You can't even do forwards. Makes no sense to me. You got another franchise there, left wing. Why wasn't he showing up when I did? I guess maybe it's because they weren't scouted players. That's got to be what it was. Shillington franchise. Some really weird things. We take McDavid. Honestly, I don't care. Let's take like a random dude and just see, you know, where the rest of these guys get taken. And yeah, Connor McDavid did go at number two. You can see his potential there. It shows a high top six, which is what our scouts were guessing it was, but I don't think it's his actual potential. Same with Brazil there being a low bottom six. Shillington, low seventh D. When they get taken, like, it doesn't show their rating potential. How I can't click on this to, like, see his stats. Uh, where is Connor McDavid? It doesn't look like he gets added to the team during the draft. I think I've seen that right. And with Calgary here, they took Matt Barzell, and he's not popping up. So... Like, you wouldn't even know how good a player is till after the draft, which kind of sucks. Like, it's cool to see if you missed out on a guy. Mackenzie Blackwood, they're actually last pick in the draft. Connor Ingram taking one before him. Um, it does, you know, show our picks there. We got Dylan Strom at 10, which is kind of a steal, to be honest. And so, like, right here, guys, you can see Dylan Strom, medium potential. He does now pop up. We also grabbed Ivan Provorov. Wow. And honestly, guys, it's just such small things. Like, I'm noticing the resign phase. I can't, like, advance a day from the calendar screen. And then if I'm not on the calendar screen, I can't see like how many days I have remaining. So I'm kind of like advancing the day blind. I have no idea what's coming next. So I think, yeah, just so many, you know, little UI changes that have happened in the last nine years, but they really make the mode that much better. And now we can sign free agents. So I'm just kind of curious to see how this works. Um, Justin Williams is the best. Yager I didn't keep. I didn't actually keep any of our players because it doesn't matter. Um, so really nobody crazy. And I'll do proposed trade here. Can we see McDavid now that's free agency on the Coyotes? Again, there's a glitch. And yeah, it does show McDavid. Only high elite. Uh, definitely should have been better than that. And if I click on him here, I can actually, you know, see all of his stats now as well. And again, like you don't see any junior stats. So 
Uh, you don't know how well he did or anything like that. But yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it for the mode. Definitely would not want to go back and play uh, GM mode on NHL 15 next gen. If I did want to do a video for NHL 15 GM mode, I would definitely be using like the 360 slash PS4 version as this version. It's just, yeah, so bare bones, not even having an AHL team. You know, so many just other quality of life things not here. Um, is it the worst GM mode ever? I mean, I'm sure it's better than like NHL 98 or something, but... I remember NHL 2003 being better than this, so it's probably one of the worst of the last 30 years, which isn't great for a game that's only 9 years old. But I'd like to hear from you guys in the comments section, did you ever play this game? If you did, did you remember the GM mode being really bad? Did you actually enjoy it? I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts, and as always, hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.